we will explore today 12 Linux commands that you should know as a DevOps engineer. Now, being familiar with Linux systems is always a good advantage if you want to become a better DevOps engineer or even if you want to just getting started learning about DevOps. So that's why I will share with you the commands that I use the most on a daily basis and we will do this within 10 minutes because there are thousands of commands that will help you to achieve different kinds of tasks depending on what you want to do with your Linux servers. So let the clock begin here and let's get started. Grab command allows you to search anything that you are looking on your system. I can search for the keyword of root in this file, which happens to be the file that represents all the users in your Linux system. And you can see that I will receive some results because we have a root user. I can do a negative matching by adding here the dash V argument. Give me all the lines that are not containing the root. I can also add here the N argument to receive the line number and I can also search recursively in a directory meaning that if I will remove the specific file here let's say that I am looking for all the files in the etc directory I can now use dash R and then search for all the files that are containing the root keyword you can again here include N to receive the line number which is very nice and the more that you will be familiar with the grab command, the more comfortable you will feel with the Linux system. The combination of cat, tail and head could be very useful if you want to read files that you are looking for a valuable information. Say that you want to see again the file with the users in your system, then you can go ahead and use the cat command. But sometimes you only want to read specific lines of your file. So say that in case that you want to read the last 10 lines, you can use the tail command, but sometimes you even want to read the last line. So you can go ahead and say dash n1 to read the last line. And the same goes with the head command. Sometimes you want to read the first line of your file. So you can use the dash n1 in that case. But if you will not specify the dash n1, then the default option will be reading the first 10 lines. So those three commands should be used together and you can just use them smartly depending on what your goal is in that specific moment. Top command is a beautiful interactive command that lists you all the processes on your system and meanwhile that it is running, then you can go ahead and specify some arguments to sort it the way that you want. Say that you want to change this interactive mode by being refreshed from 3 seconds to 1 second, which is the default, then you can use the S and then you can see that I receive change delay from 3 to 1 and then I can just say enter and then we will have faster refresh time, okay? So in some cases you also want to see by who those processes are started. So you can use the U command and blank for all is nice but let's say that i want to see all the processes by the root user then i'm just going to specify it and you will see some changes in the output of course if you will specify some random user that has less processes then you will see fewer results in order to get out from this interactive mode you can use the q command if you want to see more help then of course h will be very helpful and now we want to get out from the help so we will press q one time and we will press one more time in order to get out of it and we are back in our terminal lsblk gives you all the block devices that you have on your system by executing it you will see all your devices and also some devices could be divided into partitions so you will see a nice division of that and you can also use the dash dash fs to receive some more information like the uuid now in combination with lsblk i really like the command of df so let's clean here and use df this gives you a full information about all the file systems that exist on your system, but it will also give you information like the usage. So you can see that a device that is mounted in the very first location on your system, which is one forward slash, meaning your boot, you can see that it uses 14% of the entire system. 
So sometimes this command is extremely useful if you want to debug problems on your system because sometimes you might be out of space. So one of the first things that you are looking to do is to execute this one. And sometimes checking the disk usage is one of the first commands that you will execute on a Linux system that you know that it has some problems. Okay, so some networking commands and I'm going to show one that I really like lately to use and that is called double S, which is just an alternative command for netstat. It will allow you to check all the active connections right now. If you will enter, then you can see we have some ports that are open here. It displays it very nice and I really like the argument of dash two TULPN, which shows you the established connections. So for example, we will see here a result about SSH because obviously I'm logged in with an SSH connection right now and you can also see here the process ID that is responsible to give you that service so if I was to terminate the process with that PID there's a great chance that I will get thrown out from this secure shell because this will basically terminate the SSH service um, there are more comments that are really worth to be familiar with if you don't know like ping for testing connections and maybe an mcli to configure your network devices which will allow you to change ip address and stuff like that system ctl or what is known as system control is used to display all the services and all other kinds of units in your linux server now this is like an interactive command so if you press on q then you will get your terminal back you have some sub commands that you can go ahead and use so for example systemctl and as a sub command i can just pass in actions like start stop reload restart re-enable and so on obviously it has like hundreds of options most of the familiar ones are start for starting a service stop for stopping and restart and reload reload is a good option because it will only reload the changes in the configuration files that your service is depending on so sometimes reloading a service is much more efficient than restart. It will cause you what is so called a less downtime for the service. If we want to go ahead and reload a service that is called sshd.service, then we can go ahead and do that. And that is just reloading the configuration files that are relying in order the SSH service to run successfully. So that is a great example. Here's a command that I really like to use. As you can see in the right terminal, I am logged in as another user called JSC. So in my right, in my left terminal, I will execute only the W command and I will receive the currently logged in users. And that is useful sometimes when you want to restart server, then you can know who you need to notify that you are about to restart the server because obviously they are just going to be kicked out. So that's just a useful command that you should be aware of. So check out in the right side that I have created some folders and some files. Now say that I want to identify the files that are owned by a specific user. I can go ahead and use the find command. So I'm going to say find all the files in the entire system that are owned by the user of JSC. And you can see that I received the expected result as you can see the last five lines and a bunch of other files. And there are a lot of more criteria that you can filter your files and folders by. Let's say that you want to search for all the files in your system that their size are larger than 100 megabytes. This is the syntax that you can go ahead and do that. And you can see that sometimes when you search for a files, Linux system will see you that the expected file has not been found. This might happen sometimes when you do not have permissions or some other reasons. So in order to skip errors in such commands, then you can go ahead and say, throw all the errors to greater than to forward slash dev null. So by adding this addition to those kind of commands, you will skip the errors and you will see only the files that are accessible to you. And check out how many criteria you can filter your files and folders by. So I'm going to say find, again, searching in the entire system, pressing dash one more time and then tab for auto completion. Check out how many options you have. So this is extremely powerful and go ahead and explore this command. Definitely it's worth it. Journal CTL is the number one command to use that will query the logs for you across your system. By using journal CTL dash dash follow, you will see the logs of your system in real time. 
you can use Ctrl C or Ctrl Z to interrupt it and get out of it. Now on the right side, I will throw a bunch of logs to our system so you can see this in real time. This is a command that you do not really need to remember, but you can use the logger command to throw your own logs. Not really a service doing that, but you as a user do that. So I will throw an authentication log, kind of, and I will just say debug the authentication log. So I'm just sending a random log here. I will do this a couple of times and check out what happens on the left side. We see the logs on real time on our system. And that is probably the number one, if not the number two command that you will write in order to identify problems on your Linux server. So let me know if you enjoyed in this video. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see more videos like this one. And also share with us what Linux commands you use in order to solve different Linux problems. So please hit the like button if you enjoyed in here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next upload.